Well, I was all set to do an episode about billionaires in space, billionaires in space, which is gonna come out later this week. But then there was a tweet from Elon Musk at about 1.48 in the morning last night that confirms some of the things that I had asked about and suggested that Tesla do. And so I figured, boy, I better do an episode about that. So here's an episode about Tesla audio. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So you can see things are beginning to change a little bit. At least I've got my main camera back again, my Sony Alpha A7 III. <laughs> I think that's the number. <laughs> Sony and, and a lot of companies, they seem to like to have these uh, you know long names that don't really mean anything. But anyway, it's nice to have that back again. Hopefully the video quality will be substantially better than my USB camera that I have, that I've been using for the last few episodes. Uh, it's pretty janky. Everything's on like boxes and everything right now, but I'll get it like permanently set up. But anyway, one of the nice things about this, of course, is that I have much, much more room. So I think we're going to do some half bookshelves with like decorations behind it. So that should be pretty cool. Anyway, so that's what's happening in the uh, present tense right now. But what I really wanted to talk about in this episode, like I said, I was going to do one on billionaires in space, billionaires in space, because, you know, Richard Branson, Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, it's a big summer for um, billionaires in space. But anyway, Elon Musk's tweets at two o'clock in the morning last night were too important. They actually tail into some videos that I've done. You can check them out here if you're interested. But I had suggested that in addition to cameras, because of course human beings, we have cameras, right? We have our two eyeballs. We also have IMUs or inertial measurement units in terms of our inner ears. So right when you're going around a corner rapidly, you get a sense of how fast the car is going around and how much gravity is shifting. That makes a big difference, right? On a wet road or something like that, you don't want to feel a really big sideways pull because you could hydroplane and the car could spin out. So that's really important. And of course, Tesla has that. It has IMUs you know, for days. <laughs> Much more sensitive ones than human beings have. But the third element of that is hearing. And I have suggested for a long time again, and like I said in a video, but also in person a lot, I've suggested that audio was super, super important. And that is because a lot of times you can hear things that you can't see, specifically emergency vehicles, but there's also other things. I mean, you could hear accidents, you could hear car horns, uh, there, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a lot of stuff that goes along and it's not common, right? You don't need audio every day for driving, but in those kinds of circumstances, it's really, really important to have some sort of audio feed. Uh, like I said, again, particularly with, uh, with emergency vehicles because a fire truck or an ambulance or a police car, you need to hear those from a long distance away. If you only recognize them when you see them, that's actually too late, right? So most of us, I'm sure you can remember a time where you're kind of in heavier traffic and there's stuff going on around you, but you hear a siren and you're like, oh crap, where's that coming from, right? And so you start to look around and then of course you see it in the rearview mirror or from the side or something and you take steps to get out of the way. But that's an early warning system that's really, really helpful for human beings and obviously would be beneficial for cars under those circumstances. And by the way, all of this also fits into some things that I've also called for in previous videos about Tesla needing to, or any kind of a fully autonomous driving system, needing to pay attention to things like brake lights and such, right? So a lot of times us human beings, again, you're driving on a highway or something, and if the cars in front of you turn their brake lights on and you see them flashing on, that gives you a an alert before you notice that the car is slowing down to tell you that it might be time to pay attention and maybe take your foot off the accelerator or something and start to get ready to brake, sometimes an emergency braking situation, right? But that can give you an extra few seconds of information that you don't have. Again, we don't have radar, and now, of course, Teslas don't have radar either. It, we don't have a thing that's telling us exactly how far away that car is at any given time. And if you refer to the videos that I just did on Andre Carpathy's talk at CVPR, 21, you can see that Tesla Vision is actually doing a better job than radar under extreme braking situations, which is exactly the kind of thing that happens on the highway, right? So there's a cars and they start to slow down and then the car in front of you is like, oh gosh, you know, it slams on the brakes and then you have to slam on the brakes. And that, that little extra recognition of the brake lights will give you just a little bit of extra time before you really realize that the car is slowing down. So it's extra safety margin under those circumstances. Also, it appears that Tesla's 
now recognize turn signals, and so they will actually show the car flashing its turn signals as well, the car up ahead. So that's all super, super cool, really important information that Tesla is not only taking in, but also displaying to us users, the car drivers. So anyway, let's take a look at these tweets and how they all relate to each other. So yesterday sometime, Eli Burton said, quote, whoa, Tesla Vision is now capturing and seeing the taillights on other cars. Watch the taillights go from lit up red when the cars are stopped back to gray when they take off. Another great variable for calculating the intent of others on the road. To which Elon Musk responded, quote, it will soon capture turn signals, hazards, ambulance slash police lights, and even hand gestures. And then when Drive Tesla asked the question, quote, will it be able to react to ambulance slash police vehicles when their lights and sirens are on, Elon Musk responded, quote, action will follow recognition soon thereafter. Also call, I assume that means car, will listen for sirens and alarms. So let's unpack all of this a little bit. So first of all, LiDAR and radar are, they, they just can't work with this kind of information, right? You have to have passive cameras like human beings' eyes. And again, you know, the roadways and all emergency vehicles and all warning systems, et cetera, are built for human beings. So they're built for our passive receptors, our eyes, and our passive audio receptors, our ears. So Tesla Audio or Tesla Audio, as I'm kind of calling it, it's a little bit of a mouthful, but anyway, I, I don't know. Tesla Vision was cool, so Tesla Audio, something along those lines. But anyway, that is an extra piece of information that the car is collecting. So through its passive receptors, meaning its eyeballs or its cameras, and through its passive audio receptors, meaning its ears, right? So it's got microphones. I'm unclear whether it has any external microphones. This might be entirely internal microphones, so it might be listening to the same thing, right? So when you say like, you know, you push the button and you say like play, uh, I don't know, Counting Crows or something like that. Going to a concert soon, so I'm thinking about that. Anyway, uh, so, you know, if you push that, there's obviously a microphone inside the car that's listening. I think it's built in near the camera that is the camera that also monitors the interior of the car, but I'm not sure. I don't know that they have any external audio sources or inputs like microphones, but it's probably enough. If it's got something inside the car and it's listening for that particular, like, you know, depending on what country you're in, the nee, 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 or whatever, for European countries or whatever different sounds you have, uh, depending on where you are. But if it's listening for that at all times sort of passively and then wakes up and says, aha, there's something going on that's important, like police, ambulance, or fire truck. And of course, it can differentiate between those different vehicles if it needs to. But also, again, it can be listening and if it hears like a loud sound or if it hears uh, a crash or if it hears honking or something, it can also wake up and it can start to interact with the, uh, with the visual system and it can say what is going on right now, what's happening, pay attention to all of this stuff. So it's more information. Now, of course, there will be sensor fusion issues, but I think that audio is going to be a very specialized use case. Uh, and you know, as you can tell from Elon Musk's tweet, he's saying like basically it's listening to police slash ambulance sirens. It's listening for that particular thing. So it might grow in the future, but for now, it might be just a little extra early warning. And that's not really a huge sensor fusion issue because it's a very specialized case. And it's also, again, early warning. Generally speaking, you can often hear these cars, uh, these the trucks, whatever it is, before you see them. So the audio will be a pre-warning system for the vision system to look around and see what's going on. And of course, in terms of Tesla vision, it's also super important that Tesla vision is now interacting with brake lights and turn signals, et cetera. So again, right, that gives you information. If you see a car up ahead of you turn its left turn signal on, if you're in a right-hand driving country, you know, especially if it's a one-lane road, you know it's very, very highly likely that that person is going to slow down soon, right? Because they're gonna to have to make a left-hand turn against traffic and it, it, you know, they might have to wait for traffic going the other direction. So you can pre-prepare for stopping in that case. So as opposed to you know full self-driving right now, the version that I have is always reactive rather than proactive. That's what I always call it, right? It's a dumb driver. So what it does is when the car slows down, it's like, oh crap, I better slow down. But as a human being, you can see either the brake lights or the turn signal or something like that come on earlier, and that gives you pre-warning. It says something is going to happen soon. Now, you know, obviously humans are dumb and we do weird things, and so sometimes somebody just turns their left turn signal on and keeps on driving. 
driving. But under normal circumstances, this at least gives you warning and says braking is probably going to happen. You're probably going to have to slow down. Time to pre-prepare for all of this stuff. And that is super, super important as a way of giving more preemptive information. So rather than being reactive, like you know, pretty much all full self-driving computers are right now, our Mazda traffic aware cruise control with the radar thing is very reactive. The Tesla full self-driving version, whatever it is that I have that's not the beta version is very reactive. So all of these things, you know, including the sound and the vision, taking in more information allows the computer to become much more proactive. It's able to do things like human beings do, which is predict the future much more, you know, long term than just a few frames ahead. So this is all super, super huge news. It's hard to overstate how important this is, right? This is all stuff where I was like, well, Tesla Vision coming out is super important. It's really important that it's able to do all this through passive cameras. It's able to do pseudo radar, pseudo LIDAR, etc. But adding in these extra features of passive information, in other words, adding in the ability to hear things when they're far away, like ambulances and police cars, adding in the ability to recognize turn signals and brake lights, and therefore be able to start thinking in its mind, <laughs> the artificial mind, to start thinking about what's going to be happening in the next couple of seconds rather than the next couple of frames, right? So this thing's operating at about 36 frames per second, according to Dr. Carpathy. So it's, you know, right now, it's it's able to react to that and it's got a little window where it's dealing with this with this computer vision and it's making predictions about what's going on in the very, very short term, probably about one second. But adding in audio information and adding in visual information about brake lights and turn signals, etc., allows it to not just plan ahead about a second, but to plan ahead three or four or five seconds. And that turns the car from a dumb driver, right? A student driver, a learner driver, into a smart driver, into a good human driver. Someone that's actually preparing ahead of time for what's about to happen. And wow, think about how important it is that the computer is going to be able to do this in the future. That means that, you know, what the car that you could be driving soon, hopefully the car that I will be driving within the next month or two, I hope, or maybe even sooner, if Tesla deigns to give me early access to their beta software. Anyway, but you know, soon, in, in terms of like geologic time, it's gonna be very soon no matter what. But this thing is not only dealing with passive vision in terms of frame by frame and second by second, but it's going to be dealing with, with computer vision that it's going to allow it to predict things four or five five seconds in advance and to deal with audio information, which is very, very important under very narrow circumstances. But under those narrow circumstances, audio is really, really important. And so it's going to be a huge change. This is not a step change. This isn't like a little change that Tesla is making. Clearly their computer vision, their FSD version nine is a giant leap forward in a lot more ways than we even knew about it first. So that's amazing. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it fun and interesting. If you did, please like it because that's how YouTube's algorithm works, speaking of AI. And also, of course, consider subscribing to the channel if you enjoy this kind of content. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. You all are absolutely amazing. Thank you for putting up with me during this huge time of transition. I have a whole bunch of new patrons to thank. So here's a big new Patreon patron shout out for all of you. We have Steve Semionitis, Christopher Erickson, Roy Van Wensen, Rick Jessup, Ocular 3XT1000, good name there, Yang Liu, Sagar Patel, Fleming Skovbjerg, I hope I pronounced that something close to right, and Christopher Espendola. Thank you all so much for all of your support. I really appreciate it. And of course, if you want to join the fun, definitely check out the link in the description. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Thank you. And don't forget about our merch store, which now has physics is the law, everything else is a recommendation, which is a quote by Elon Musk, as well as other t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, etc, etc. Check it out in the description. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how clicking on a link and going shopping for a car, a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. And as always, feel free to ask me questions in the comments or at my email address, which is knows at gmail.com. Till next time, bye-bye.